This is the Keychron V1. It's an entry-level, custom mechanical keyboard from Keychron. It has all the sought-out after features and a very approachable price point in what seems like the perfect keyboard for a newcomer into this hobby. Wait, doesn't Keychron already have enough keyboards? Well, the V1 is essentially an entry-level version of a Q1 versus it being related to their wireless K-series boards. The major difference is that it's made of ABS plastic and it's tray mounted versus the gasket mounting featured on the enthusiast level Q series boards. This version I have is the fully assembled knobless one. At launch, this version went for $74, including the Keychron OSA PBT keycaps as well as the Keychron K Pro switches. Note, these are Keychron's own switches and they're not related to Gateron Pro switches that you find on their higher end boards. They feel pretty smooth, but I felt the sound was a bit weak. This can also be had as a bare bones kit for $54 at launch. In addition, there was a knob version that increased that price by about $10 each. The V1 is perfect on paper. It features hot swappable, south facing PCB, VIA and QMK compatible. It has RGB. It works with PC and Mac. It uses screw in stabilizers. It comes with dampeners. It even has these flippy feet and three different height adjustments. So for someone new to this hobby, this does check pretty much all the boxes for the price of something like a GK61. Now, other than this thing looking like a plastic Q1, does it also perform like a Q1? Well, let's start by listening to how it sounds. The V1 comes pretty loaded with filler material, and you can notice it here in the sound test. The lower silicone fill does a good job of keeping the board from sounding like hollow plastic, and the EVA plate dampening foam keeps the steel plate from pinging. However, it being a tray mounted keyboard, the feel is indeed on the stiffer side, and the filler does dampen the sound quite a bit. In addition, the Keychron K Pro switches sound a bit thin, and the larger OSA caps can't really fix that. So, if I ended the review right here, I would say that the V1 is a good entry-level keyboard for newcomers into the hobby with the right feature sets to help someone figure out what they ultimately want. Try out different switches, keycaps, learn VIA and QMK, learn to tune stabilizers and so on. So a good entry point into this hobby. However, I felt like the entire time this keyboard was being hindered by the switch and keycap options that were actually put on the keyboard by Keychron. So, I put nicer switches and keycaps to see what really happens. The switches I used are KTEX S1 Peach Linear Switches. These are made by Texi and features a proprietary HPE blend that is set to improve upon the standard UHMWPE. It's a long stem pole switch and does have a nice, solid sound profile, so I thought it would be perfect for this application. For keycaps, I used PBT Fans Purple keycaps from KBT Fans. I think these look awesome with this smoky black case, so hey, let's put all this together and let's see how, what happens. Immediately, I felt like the keyboard took a drastic step towards the better. Just sounds so much more lively. However, I felt like a small modification can really clean up the sound and help the V1 pop. So, I rewinded back to 2020 and pulled out some O-rings. Remember these? Yup, the same mod that made the tofu pop. Can I use this on the V1? Why not? So if you undo the screws on the bottom, it releases the top frame of the V1 like this. Then you can undo all the plate screws, then release the plate and separate it from the PCB and the lower case like this. At this point, you can get closer look at the lower silicone dampener. It's a pretty thick design, and you can see why it works so well to remove the lowercase hollowness, and the side effect of making the keyboard sound a bit muddy as well. As mentioned before, the PCB is a hot swap south facing PCB with per key RGB that works with both VIA and QMK. Also uses Gateron sockets, which is very like the Kale ones. For a keyboard at this price point, that is awesome. It's not using some weird Ut Utemu sockets that doesn't really work with most switches. Oh, it also uses Keychron's own screw-in stabs. These are so so stabilizers, but Keychron made sure to drown it in grease, so they worked out okay. But you can always upgrade these to something nicer if you want in the future. 
Now, the plate is steel, similar to all the latest Q-series boards. It also comes with the EVA plate foam to help dampen the natural resonance of steel plates. So I suggest you use this and keep this in the board. If you look below, the telltale signs of a tray-mounted keyboard. The design of the V1 is that the plate will actually mount straight into the lower case. This helps to create a more solid sound, but also makes that board sound a little bit thuddy because all that force is going straight into that lower case. Now, similar to what I did for the tofu before, I am only going to use the O-rings on the outer perimeter of the standoffs and try to keep the alpha area clear. This helps to create a more even and cleaner typing sound. To make the process easier, insert the screw and the o-ring onto the plate first like this, then assemble it instead of trying to balance the o-rings on the stand up itself and try to put everything on top. As in the past, when using o-rings, you don't want to over compress it, so just use your fingers to tighten like this. Similar to the case screws as well, I found that a firm finger tightness is more than enough to keep everything nice and tight together. So now, let's take this for a spin. Alright, so what do you think? For me, the major difference with the O-ring is that the overall keyboard sounds much cleaner. It has a nice O-ring pop and you definitely hear less of that muddy sound from just the switch and the keycap upgrade. So check this out kind of back to back. The O-rings don't make the keyboard any bouncier, but it does help to take the edge off a little bit from the hard tray mount bottom out. Overall, I think this changes the V1 for the better for sure. So what are my final thoughts? The V1 is a board that was designed to provide newcomers a great foundation to this interesting hobby. It features all the necessary capabilities for someone to really get deeper into custom mechs and decide whether they want to continue down the rabbit hole or not. In my opinion, I would say go with the lower priced $54 bare bones kit and do your own switches and keycaps. While smooth, the optional K-Pro switches sound pretty thin in my opinion, I, even more so than like the standard Gateron Reds. And the Keychron OSA keycaps are not my favorite in terms of looks or sound. And if you want the ultimate version, grab some O-rings from Amazon and that simple mod really transforms the V1 to provide a much higher level sound from a $54 package. It's similar to what happened with the Tofu. Standard Tofu, not the very best in terms of sound, but with the O-rings, it really transforms. That impact also applies to the V1 as well. I would also leave you with this. The elephant in the room is the KBD Fans Tiger 80 Lite. That thing does cost a little bit more at $89 for the bare bones kit, but it also does offer that soft flexibility from a gasket mounted keyboard that you might be looking for, while it lacks perky RGB and some of the features the V1 actually has. However, at the end of the day, you need to think whether you want a TKL like a Tiger 80 Lite or a 75% like this V1. And if you do go V1, I would suggest buy some O-rings, you will not regret it. If you enjoyed this video, Please like and subscribe and I'll have more content for you in the future. Thank you.